Broadway Interludes presented by Art Lab. I'm your host, Megan Chocolis, and today I am joined by the oh so talented <laughs> Michaela Diamond. Hi! Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it because she is a busy lady <laughs> who has graciously decided to come on our little talk show. Aww. Now, I have to start off by saying Michaela is no stranger to Art Lab. During the pandemic, for those of you who don't know, Art Lab led the field when it came to high quality virtual productions, the first of which, Disenchanted, which featured Michaela in the role of Cinderella. Now, can you talk a little bit about your experience putting on a virtual show? Uh, well, I will tell you that my apartment was wrecked <laughs> and I found glitter on my goddamn couch for months <laughs> after that performance. Um, clothes in my hair, um, like just in the crevices of the carpet. I mean, <laughs> like my vacuum was filled with it. It because my costume was so glittery. Um, so that that really stayed with me. Um, <laughs> but our studio audience going crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it really was uh, such a weird, wild experience. And as you said, it was the first of kind of a lot of people starting to do these like Zoom productions. Um, and of course, as actors, it's not fun to not be face to face with other actors. I mean, so many people who were in school and college at the time were having to do Zoom classes or show up to school in masks and then not see someone's face. Like it was just a really rough time, I think, for all actors. But I will say that that production, I think people, the people there were craving it a bit because we all ended up getting oddly close. It became this weird bonding experience, <laughs> even though none of us had really, I don't think any of us had met in person. Mm -hmm. um, just such great, Lisi was in it, Celia was in it, JG, like all these, Jen, who I ended up working with the following summer, like it was just a great group of women who, um, Alicia was in it, like so fun, <laughs> like it was such a fun, group and because it was the first um time we had ever done it no one really had any of the answers and we were all just kind of figuring it out and meg was really open to um figuring it out with us and really having us kind of be collaborators with her which was cool so um you know we were always like typing in the little zoom box <laughs> like how are you doing <laughs> um so yeah weird crazy experience but um Grateful that was the first one and um, glad I glad I could do it because it was I remember it being in the afternoons. We started at like one and I was doing uh, culinary school and I was doing morning school at the time. So I was okay. like literally waking up at six, seven to 12 was school and then I'd race home and like get into a freaking Cinderella outfit <laughs> from like one to six. It was, this, it was the weirdest time of my life. It was like such a strange month, but um, the kookiness was needed at the time. And I think like we had some really dumb laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> Which was needed, I think, during that time. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have to ask about the culinary thing you just mentioned. So yeah. do you have a passion for cooking alongside theater? Yes, I love cooking. I love food. I love eating. So, um, and with no, you know, jobs at the time, I was like, this might be a perfect time to go to school for it. And I never went to college. So um, I felt like I uh, could pay for it at the time. And um, it was such a great decision. I'm so happy that I did it. Um, I met amazing people and didn't get a job until it was already over. Okay. <laughs> which is great because, you know, I've used it. So I've started a supper club since then, which wow. has been really fun. And, you know, I really just love connecting with people and hosting and sharing food. So yeah. it's been a really beautiful kind of side job hustle um, and way to connect after like such a uh, unconnected time. Right. Um, Disconnected, I should say. So I'd love to jump back in time and ask about how your theatrical journey began. Like, how old were you when you first got started? Yeah, I was so young. I remember <laughs> really always loving it. I think dance was my first love. Okay. Um, I was really little. I did ballet all the time. I was singing so loud all the time. I think people people were confused about how I could have such a big sound in such a small 
body and I loved that attention <laughs> um, and the praise that came with it. Um, still do. <laughs> it's a very egotistical business. Um, but I really do love, um, I've loved it for, for so long. Um, and I think like the community I found doing shows when I was five, being in a ballet class um, with like my girls, I just always loved um, the people in it. Um, they were weird and fun. And then when I was like seven or eight, um, my mom, I remember I kind of grew out of all of the dance studios in my like town in New Jersey. And my mom created one. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and she called it Creative Connection Studio. And she hired all these unbelievable te- teachers. She taught yoga there. And sh- she hired this ex-ballerina. Her name was Rachel. And I learned so much from her. And I did tab and jazz and you know, I ended up teaching kids yoga. I just like, I had the best time at that studio. Um, and we ran it for like three years. Uh, and I'm ever, ever grateful for my mom for oh. doing that. Um, and then we shut it down and moved to New York City. I had done a show when I was 10 in the city during the summer. And we got back home and I was in seventh grade. I guess I wasn't 10 then, probably 11 or something. Yeah. 11 or 12, um, and uh, and I did this amazing show, got back home, and we were like in the middle of my seventh grade, and my mom was like, do you wanna just move? Like, should we just leave? It was. It's always been just us, and so we picked up our stuff, and we moved to New York, and it, cool. it's been like a beautiful journey ever since, but so grateful that I moved here, and you know, having my formative years here, because I do feel like I'm such a city person. Right. I know they say like 10 years, and you're a city person, and I, it's been way over 10 years now. I really do feel like one, so <laughs> for better or for worse, who knows? <laughs> and that must have led into your Broadway debut, which you were very young when you booked it. Yes. That must have been thrilling. What was that like? Well, I went to LaGuardia High School okay. in the city, and uh, my senior year I did Gypsy, and some agents came to see the show, and so I ended up freelancing with them over the summer, and one of the auditions I went on was Cher, and when I booked it, I was like, what? is happening i always (laughs) wanted to go to college i wasn't like i want to work i was like i want a bfa yeah (laughs) (laughs) so i was like super thrown off and i was going to carnegie mellon and and then all of a sudden i booked this incredible show with very starry people and all of a sudden was kind of learning directly on the job Uh, uh and then we opened december 3rd of 2019 i was 19 years old it's yeah. wild. That must have been so exciting, though. And, you know, that cast, what a fun group of people, like an amazing group of people. So I bet you have tons of backstage <laughs> fun moments, memories. Do you have any you would like to share? Oh, gosh. There's so many good ones. One I love because there's been many moments when forgetting the words on stage is a horrifying, very anxiety-ridden um, or producing experience. But <laughs> there was one time when I think Jared's understudy was on Michael Ciccone, who I love dearly. And um, I was, I think it's like whenever there's an understudy on, it's amazing because you're like, you have to come out of your muscle memory a little bit because there's a new person saying <laughs> lines differently in front of you. And um, we were in the middle of when the money's gone. And I just remember it, there's a lot of rhymes in the song. And I remember like going to the white room and having to rhyme. And I just <laughs> kept rhyming. I was like, when the money's gone, will you be my boat? And I'll put on a coat till I get a remote in the winter coat. <laughs> like literally just kept going. It was truly chaos. And then I remember I exit off stage and then all the ensemble comes on and does this like dance moment. Right. And I remember being, you know, pale as hell, like about to throw up. And I walk off stage and then the whole dance ensemble is standing there going, no. Just slow clap for like my my <laughs> rhyming skills. It happened. There's been a few line mess ups that I can't quite live down, but um, that one does live in my happy memory okay. side, which is good. That's good. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> now, um, going from such like a fun, exciting show like the Share Show, and then I had the extreme pr- privilege of seeing you mm. last week in Parade, Mm. which what a brilliant show, what a heartbreaking story. And, you know, it comes at such an important time, especially Mm -hmm. now with all of the violence and hate that's 
arising in the country. And I just have to ask, you know, it must have been hard stepping into a role which you can relate to more than others, I assume. So what were your biggest difficulties during the mm. creation process? Well, we didn't have much time. City Center is kind of like shot out of a cannon, right. which is kind of beautiful, I yeah. think. There's something magical about this, like, how are we going to put on this production? And we had 10 days to do it. Ooh. And there's something about that magic that kind of like, you just can't second guess your instincts. And because they're able to cast it in such a high caliber, it's so amazing because you're working with people who are beyond talented. So there's this beautiful trust in whatever we're going to put on stage is going to be on stage. And that's what it's <laughs> going to be. We only have 10 days. Um, so that part was actually kind of beautiful. I think, yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, this is the perfect time to do the show. And yeah, anti-Semitism right now in this country is, it's so sad to think about, but you know, it's never gone away. Right. Um, and I think like what you said is true, like hate in general, um, white supremacy in general, pits us all against each other. And I think that's what's so gray um, about the musical, which I love so much, is that it's not, you know, Leo Frank, who is a Jewish man in the South, is not necessarily a amazing, kind, nice guy. Like he's really flawed and he's arrogant and you don't necessarily want to root for him. It's not, it, you know, there's there's a struggle in, in liking him in general, um, which I actually like. Um, and why that's a part of the story. But I do think at the core of the show is a marriage between these two people. And Michael Arden says this really well, our director, that like yeah. fear and love are so oddly sleeping in the same bed and wow. are opposites and so intertwined. And I think the show really does point to so many hates in the yeah. show, so many acts of violence. Um, you know, and early 1900s, like this Jewish people are hated, black people are hated, and they did not, definitely did not come together. They, they were pitted against each other. And I think it's important to realize that um, I think as allies, allies who are like all marginalized, like you really do have to come together at a certain point um, and fight for each other. And that's the only way it's ever gonna make big progress. And I think that so many people who came to see the show really were having these deep conversations about allyship and how, you know, how do we move forward? Because this was written for a time period in 1913 and yeah. we're in this place now and still you know in New Jersey JCCs are having to close because right. there's bomb threats I mean it is mind-blowing that yeah. this is still an issue um so yeah I'm really really happy it was received so well and I got so many messages from people who just were moved by it and I'm so it's so rare to be an actor and to be struck by lightning like that, like when you're in a piece with incredible people, an incredible creative team, incredible material, and it's at the right time. It's just like it aligns in a way that it's so rare for musical theater to do. Yeah. So I'm really happy. I'm happy for Jason and yeah. and Hal Prince, rest in peace, and Alfred Urey who, you know, have struggled to get this piece right. correct. Not that there's a right way to do it, but received well, and I'm so happy. I hope that Hal is looking down on this being like, you're doing great, you know? <laughs> it's like, this is what, um, this is how it was supposed to be received then, and it just like America perhaps wasn't ready then. So right. I'm happy that it's, people are loving it. And you could really tell, like from the audience perspective, you could really tell that everyone on stage cared so deeply yeah. about the story that they yeah. were telling. And like you said, I, I'm i just so thrilled that it's getting the attention that it's been getting. It's all I've been hearing about for the past <laughs> week since since I've seen it. Okay. It's all that I've been listening to. I've, I've been obsessed. And, you know, I liked what you said about just everyone getting shot out of the cannon. We trust in each other. Yeah. What an amazing group of people you were working with. Mm -hmm. So I'm 
assuming again there was a fun memory or moment that was like your favorite to look back on there's yeah I mean my gosh it was so recent but I think that my favorite part of it was kind of forming this friendship with Ben we did the workshop together three and a half years ago and I've said this before but I think that we really had a beautiful respect for each other as actors um and then I think in this process the respect kind of went deeper into like a friendship um and love I mean I really do I when when we sing all the ways to time and that whole scene really I really am so in love with him (laughs) Um, and it's so easy it's so easy to just like I I don't think about anything else. I'm just so mad for him, and I think he's brilliant, and I hope we get to work together more. (laughs) (laughs) Ben, if you're watching. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Now, speaking of some of the roles that you've played, we talked about Babe. We just talked about Lucille. Yeah. There's probably countless others that you've played. What has been your overall favorite? I know that's a really hard question, but I'm just curious. Lucille's really high up there, I will say. I don't imagine. Um, I think, like, if you, I think you're saying, like, you, I can go back to, like, high school and all that. Anything things. you want, yeah. And then the other few are probably, I loved playing Sally. That oh, was really fun. We played Sally Voles and Cabaret. Um, I loved playing Margaret and Light the Piazza. Not Clara. Margaret. <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> I loved it. There was a lot of Margaret and Lucille, actually. Yeah. I will say, like, this kind of steely southern woman comes out. Um, and then, uh, gosh, what I loved Louise in Gypsy. That was another oh, favorite, yeah. I think. I had a great cast, too. It was so fun ripping at each other. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Now, do you have any dream roles that you still would love to play? Oh, um, my goodness. Any stage anywhere? Any stage anywhere. Yeah. Um, obviously, the first one that comes directly into my mind is Dot. <laughs> I think oh. playing Dot on Sunday would be such a dream um obviously it's one of my son favorite song times and i love it so much um the baker's wife i would love to play one day um more jrb bridges is one of my favorite scores of all time and i think singing that score every night would be crazy it would be (laughs) so fun i mean it yeah, it feels like all the wasted time times 12, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so I think singing bridges would be really fun too. Those are probably my top three. Brilliant. Yeah. Now that you've mentioned it, would you please sing some of it for us? Yes. Okay, of course. course. Okay, let's do it. All right. Okay. To the piano. To the piano. Thank you for being here. Yes, of course. It was amazing talking to you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. This has been Broadway Interludes presented by Art Lab. See you next time. Bye. Bye.